Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, uh, what I do know is this is 4F Beauty. And if I've remembered, you're watching me in black and white because this is a palette bingo collaboration with uh, the beautiful Marlin. We have collabed a number of times on a number of different things. But in particular today, we are collabing. And doing a palette bingo with the Colourpop Flutterby palette. So, if you want to find out exactly how well or otherwise this palette performed and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you have the best seat in the house. As I have said for some time now and oft hear it echoed by other channels, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I will have shown you in the intro this palette and no doubt explained this is a palette bingo <clears throat> now I still have a phobia about moths but I've actually managed to make progress on my phobia of butterflies because there was a time I couldn't even look at this let alone touch it but it is very beautiful, beautiful packaging. And the outer box is exactly the same. <clears throat> so, this is what the inside looks like. This is why I have not yet bought the mauve nine pan palette, because I'm pretty sure this one We'll do that one. So, the colours that I ended up getting were Wild Wing, Gotta Fly, Angel BB, Float On, and Sun Flare. I'll put those up on screen here for you, <clears throat> just in case you couldn't see them too well in that, because I'm very much aware. I really wish they would stop doing this packaging because I end up having to tilt the packaging backwards, forwards, sideways and then you don't really see the true colours so that's why I'm going to put a picture up here. Now, despite the fact that this is a collab and a palette bingo, this is still a teaching channel. I've always wanted mine to be a teaching channel. I've always gone at sensible speed. I can't go very quickly because of my chronic pain. But I don't speed things up. I don't cut things out. So because of that, my films are generally, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes longer than the majority of films you will see. That's because I want beginners to be able to follow along every single step and see exactly how long that blending takes. <clears throat> now, if this is too slow for you, there's a speed widget up there. Please feel free to use it. Uh, another thing that I have always done, or I have done for some time, which I've now noticed that some other channels are starting to talk about as well is I've I noticed very early on that a lot of people with deep set eyes like I have were mistakenly believing that they had hooded lids so they were following the tutorials for hooded lids and wondering why their look wasn't working properly <clears throat> sorry I'm a little bit husky um, not the dog 
Well, there are some that will call me a bitch. Silicon straw before you ask. Um, hay fever, basically, not the lager lurking. Hay fever. <clears throat> Definitely hay fever. Right. So I was. I found it very frustrating for people who've got deep set eyes that there were no tutorials out there that explained the difference between deep set and hooded lids. My, my nails may not be looking as hot as they usually do because obviously the nail bar is shut so I had to try and, where well, they'd grown out, try and sort of um, buff the ridge down and then paint over them myself. It's been a while since I painted my nails so let's, um, hmm, yeah. But anyway, oh, do you see how bad my fibre is? My brain is bouncing around like a rubber ball in a rubber room. <sighs> Welcome to the strangeness of my world. Um, I think it's affecting all of us though, isn't it really? Uh, the little contact that I used to have chatting to the, the postie or you know, the lady that delivers my meds, they now sort of put it on the doorstep and kind of run away and you're like, oh, yeah, okay, thanks. But, um, getting back to the difference in eye shapes, deep set eyes and hooded lids have very similar problems, but very different workarounds. So I'm about to insert a clip, it's going to be very up close and personal, don't scream. But I'm going to insert a clip which talks you through the difference between both types of eye and teaches you the workaround for them as well. Right, once that clip has played, I will be back to put some of this onto these. Here's the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles. That I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So. 
I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, and I am back. Right, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with this Boozy Shop tapered blending brush. Uh, as always, I am holding the brush at the very end to put as little pressure onto my lids as possible and I'm going to start off by dipping into Wild Wing. I do like Colourpop's pressed shadow formula. There's enough kick up that you can pick up a little pigment on your brush but not so much that it goes everywhere. I really like that. And as usual, little circles in this direction going towards the nose. And obviously I'll reverse the direction coming back. It's kind of the Viennese walk, you do natural turns this way. And you do a flicker in the middle and then reverse turns to come back out again. But the reason I do that is because I'm 45, I'm going to be 46 in May, which is only a month away now. That's crazy. Um, and I've lost just over 14 stone now, so over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. This one, the one I'm blind in, has got super deep creasing here and moves a lot more than this side does because it got pulled around when I was five years old. But by doing this circular movement you are gently moving the skin and building the pigment up on it so that hopefully you shouldn't get the tiger striping effect or barcoding. I do get it with this eye sometimes because of those super deep creases. But I will show you that when we get to that side. This is blended out really nicely. This is a really nice transition-y shade. There is a lighter one than this called Lesh. Ooh, Lesh. 
So if I was choosing, I would have chosen that because of being Welsh lush and tidy. Oh, and it's got one called Ch Ch Changes. Ch 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 Changes. What's your favourite David Bowie song? Mine has to be Life on Mars. It was my favourite even before the TV show with Philip Glenis doing it. Woof, Gene Hunt is cute. I know he's a misogynistic, overbearing troglodyte. But damn, he's cute. I mean, he wasn't meant to be the star of the show. The star of the show was meant to be. Um, Sam Tyler, or John Sim. But after the first season, it became very obvious that Gene Hunt was who us ladies were lusting after. So, when John Sim decided after the second series he didn't want to do any more, who sucks you? I'm giving three series of Life on Mars. I preferred Life on Mars. I preferred the soundtrack of Ashes to Ashes because obviously I hit my teenage years in the 80s. But I preferred the Gene Hunt of the 70s, the sort of the Sweeney, your nipped mate type, you know. Both series gave me a lot of good memories of growing up and things I've forgotten, like white dog poo. Anyway, how did I get there? Oh yeah, changes. Oh. Okay, that blended out really nicely. I am now going to go into Angel BB. I'm going to use the same brush, I'm not going to bother cleaning it off because it's just a slightly deeper shade of what I'm already using. And when I say slightly deeper, I mean a lot deeper. And there's a lot more kick up in this one. Much, much more kick up in this pan. I don't know if you can see that. It's okay. I'll just tap off and then I'll pick that kick up up when I need to build up again. That really is deep. Okay. So, a little bit further down. Same thing though. Just circles to the middle and back again. So, I am doing this with the lovely Marlin. She and I have collabed quite a few times now. There's quite a few Swedish YouTubers that I follow and all of them are absolutely bloody amazing when it comes to colourful eye looks. Um, okay, this pigment is a little bit patchier. I do struggle here and here sometimes with very dry skin, which can sometimes affect a pigment. I'll see. I'll just keep blending, see what happens. If it doesn't blend properly, I'll grab some more of that first colour and. Uh, Use that to help blend it. Sometimes though it just takes a little bit of patience. Yeah, I don't know whether it's because Sweden has a lot of the year when they don't have very much daylight hours at all. But all of the Swedish ladies that I follow do absolutely amazing looks with colour. All of them have this natural ability to know what works together. Um, and Marlin is a very busy lady. She fits her YouTube in around her job and being a mum. And uh, on top of all of that, she is a lovely, lovely woman. She'll very often say in her films, oh I'm sorry my English is not too good and I just think, 
Babe, your English is still a million times better than my Swedish. Trust me, because where I followed so many Swedish YouTubers, I started to try and learn Swedish. Yeah, my brain just would not soak that up at all. It soaked some of it up, and then it just went, nah. No, I'm not playing this game anymore. I'm just going to clean that brush off. I'm going to grab um, a fluffier brush. I'm just going to grab my... This is my um, Luxie 205 blending brush. You can see how much more blown out this one is to this one. I'm just going to see if using this will help that blend a little bit better. Obviously there's nothing on this brush, it's just, just the bare bristles. I think that's helping a little bit. As I said, it could be that my skin there is particularly dry at the moment. Okay, it's not too bad. I'm going to clean the brush off. I'm going to dip back into that first colour that I used and just see if I can use some of that to help just blend that patchiness there. Let's dip back into Wild Wing. Just see if I can blend that edge a little bit better. I think that's helping. Yeah, Marlin is just amazing. She really is. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a look of hers that she's done that I've not liked. And she's very, very softly spoken. So, I mean, I've, I've got my channel tagged as ASMR. It's not true ASMR. I don't whisper at you and, you know, do all of that nonsense. Um, the reason I've got it tagged as ASMR is because a lot of people are saying, oh, you need to speak up, you need to speak faster. And I'm like, I'm half Welsh, half Yorkshire. The faster I talk, the more my accents come out, the less likely it's going to be that you will understand me without subtitles. That's why, as a rule, we, if we've got an accent in the UK, we tend to speak just that little bit slower. Because the faster I speak, the more the Welshness of my accent comes out. Because um, although I grew up in England, I was brought up by the Welsh side of my family, so I was surrounded with Welsh accents. So you see, if I start talking fast, you know, and my Welsh accent comes out, I'll be talking about done by you and over there and blending this whole year, and you'll, you'll probably find it quite difficult to actually understand what the heck I'm saying. Yeah. So that's why um, I tag my channel as ASMR because it just... I, can't, I really don't like this pigment, this Angel BB. It is horrible. It does not want to blend at all which is really, really unusual for a Colourpop shadow. I mean, look how that's just clinging there. Just does not want to blend at all. And when you compare it to how well that first colour blended, I mean, it could be that other people don't get this issue because they haven't got nearly 46-year-old eyelids. That's one of the benefits of me being older. My eyelids tell you the truth. Just look how patchy that is. Let's go back in with this Luxie brush, see if I can smooth it out at all. It's 
really, really disappointing because I was hoping that this palette would kind of... I don't pick up my modern renaissance very often now mainly because I've I don't really get cold it's a bit too neutral for me a few too many browns and oranges and when I do pick it up I tend to go for like born fresco cypress amber um, so I thought this could be a good kind of replacement for just look look how that is grabbing just there that's like subculture issues I mean come on I know I said I struggle sometimes with pigment clinging just there but even subculture didn't cling like that to my eyes I mean it's just you can see that there is just refusing to blend out at all. Which is really frustrating. Really frustrating. But yes, Marlin. She is very softly spoken. So if you like that about my channel, you will like that about hers too. Um, she has a very calming voice, very restful demeanour. Um, if I'm stressed, I'll either put one of hers or one of Linda's films on. Because, or Laura, because they all have very, very, to me anyway, very soothing voices, even though Laura's... Laura's not Swedish, she's she's from New Zealand. Which is where my sister and her husband live. Samantha, or Manti as we used to call her. I'm gonna go back into that wild one again and pick up some pigment and just see if I can try and do something with this blend here. You see, I leave stuff like this in. If I struggle with a pigment, I show you that I struggle with a pigment. And it's not because I'm not moisturised, because where my skin has been feeling quite dry, where we've been indoors a hell of a lot more, as well as my usual moisturisers, I put some of this on today which is the W7 version of the Fasali Unicorn Pink Goop. And normally when I put that on... Oh, that's really annoying me. I wonder if the heat from my finger might... I don't like using my fingers, because obviously nails and dragging the skin around and everything. But sometimes, if you've got a stubborn patch that won't blend out, sometimes it's the only thing you can use to... Oh, see, it's still it's like forming a line just there. Can you see that? annoying me. It's annoying me a lot. I'll grab a slightly more tapered brush. This is the Contour Brush 9 from the AliExpress set that I recommend. I'm going to go into Float On. is a, a matte but it's got some shimmer in it. Let's see how this one behaves. Hmm. 
just going to bring this down onto the outer part of my mobile lid. And tight, tiny little circles. All the way across. Can you see the difference between how... I know I've used a different brush, but... Can you see how that pigment just blended rather than clinging to one patch and refusing to move? I'm going to have to try that pigment again at some point. With a um, load of different brushes and see whether it was the brush being... Although it shouldn't be because that Luxie brush, the blue one that I used... Is brilliant at blending out any shadows that have st sort of like stuck, like this one did. Because it's got such a, a blown out head on it, it's really good, usually, blending shadows out that do that. There's that barcoding I was talking to you about that I get. Because it's so deep on this side, circular motions don't always work for me, which is very frustrating. But I deal with that when I put the shimmer on, which I will show you when we get to that point. But yes, if you haven't already followed Marlin from previous collabs that I've done with her, you really should go and follow her. She's really amazing. Um, lovely, lovely woman. Very gentle in her manner as well, which is so soothing and so relaxing and so nice to listen to. Right, this is a Morphe M321, once I've put the shimmer pigment on I'll be spraying it with, look do you see how long these slay all days last, I've had this little bit left for ages, um, I don't normally use my expensive sprays for wetting a pigment but um, the jasmine one for some reason dries my jawline out. Absolutely no idea why. None of the others do it to me, just the jasmine one. Right, so I'm going to go into Sun Flare and pick up the pigment. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Now you need to dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is tuck it in your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here, loosening your bristles, because then you won't have a brush anymore. I'm going to pop this just into the inner corner. and pull it out to about the middle of my lid-ish. That's really pretty. Right, dry the brush off before I go back in and pick up some more pigment. This is a very, very soft shimmer, so go very, very lightly, otherwise you'll end up digging holes in it. 
and then I'm barely pressing it and I'm getting, as you can see, significant amounts of shimmer. Now, as I was saying, because of the deep crease in this side, I do unfortunately have to stretch this lid out because otherwise, instead of it being blended out nicely like this, what happens is that it builds up loosely in the creases and then as it dries through the day it starts cascading down my face, gets into my eye, causes irritation, it's just, it's not fun. But you can see I only pulled it out as far as I needed to, I didn't pull it out to my ear roll. And, um, as soon as I was done I let go. Okay, now I'm going to go into the other shimmer that randomly got chosen and that's God of Fly. Right, God of Fly has got an asterisk next to it so I imagine that means it's a pressed pigment and not safe for use in the immediate eye area. In other words, it's going to stain. And if you've got sensitive eyes you might get a reaction to it. But in the UK, those pigments are still allowed for use in the immediate eye area. The FDA just haven't caught up with Europe yet. I'm going to pop this like so, and then I'm going to use the very tip of the bristles very lightly to drag the lighter shimmer on top of the deeper shimmer to give me a really subtle but pretty blend. I like that. Right, to dry the brush off, pick up a wee bit more of the pigment. And that was my Misty and Brody voice for those of you wondering. This is me slowly losing my mind, in case you were wondering. So I'll pop this onto the exact same area on this side. And you can see I'm not stretching the lid out because I haven't got the deep creasing. Again, use the tip of the bristles to blend it in with the mat at that side. And then very lightly drag the lighter shimmer across onto the deeper one just to give a nice blend between the two like so right my darlings I am going to pause you I'm going to swear quite a bit about that pigment annoying me you won't need to hear it um, I'll pop some base products on and I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press the record button to talk to you, but for you sweetheart it's going to be absolutely instant. Hey my lovelies, I decided that because that had gone so patchy I was just going to have to put some liner on today to try and hide the fact. So this is the Stargazer light gel liner from Morphe, which is black with the tiniest little bit of shimmer in, not that you can really see it. I apply it with an artist's brush because artist's brushes are so much finer than makeup brushes are. And I always keep the little plastic condom to keep the 
bristles nice and pretty like. Uh, I did my soap brows trick as I always do recently and used the annoying Angel BB shade that went patchy to colour the brows in. Okie dokie. Uh, I'm going to go in with this flat topped brush and I'm going to go into float on which is that deep brown with a little bit of shimmer in. I'm going to attach it to that wing and I'm just going to pull it along the lower lash line. I do still struggle with putting anything in my waterline. Um, and I'm risking it today with doing a wing but it was just the eye look was looking so scrappy and if it was just a review of the palette I've left it as is but it's a collab and I don't want oh dear next door's lip lens not very happy um, I don't want to let Marlin down with a scruffy look. So. I love these flat top brushes for getting up under your lashes like that. They're so good. And then, oh, regular viewers will know. Here we go. Oh, I'm starting to stream already. Right, this is the brush from the uh, Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat top like the last one, but it's chunky, so it's really great for getting under the lashes and blurring out. So I'm going to go in with Wild Wing, which was that first shade that I used up here, that gave me such good hopes for the palette. Well, obviously, I do need to try the other shades and try that annoying shade again on a day with a different brush because I will be very very disappointed if this doesn't live up to my hopes and dreams for it because I've got the wing up top I can go a little bit heavier in terms of blending out on the lower lash line. If you can't put anything in your waterline like me, then this is a great way of giving your lower lash line some emphasis without putting anything actually, you know, into the eye itself kind of thing. Um, I did try my gold gel liner when I did one of my new series last week but oh did my eye let me know about that later Whew. was not happy is an understatement yeah right I am going to grab um shall I use one of my Fenties I haven't used my Fenties for a while I think I might. Right, I'm going to grab initially Seven Day Weekend and Poolside, which are these two, and I'm going to go into the pinky mauvey shade. This is just a really cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay about 10, 12 years ago now, but it's great for just getting up underneath the brow there. Oh bless, little one's really not happy at the moment, is she? Oh no, the feeling, love. At least that side I don't have to bleep out swearing. Oh bless her. She's 
you really mean to that. Right, I'm going to pop that in the inner corner and run it along under the eye and just blur it in with the other colours. You can just do your inner corner like that. But I find with my eye shape, it just finishes it off nicely. If you just run it underneath and just blur it in with the colour that you've run underneath your eye. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to pop some mascara on, chuck some highlight on, some lipstick, do something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look again for you. No delay at all. I'll see you instantly. I am back. I used the same pinky mauve highlight. The mascara is the Charlotte Tilbury Full Fat Ashes um, sample size that my friend Hedda sent me. My lippy is one of the unnamed ones from an Oh My Glitter um, mystery box that I got last year sometime but I really like it it's so comfortable to wear as well juicy and I think it goes nicely with the uh, the eyeshadow as well um, I do have a discount code for oh my glitter um, and obviously I use my Slay All Day by Gerard, you know I've got a discount code with them. All my discount codes are listed very clearly in my description box. And they all state whether I earn from them or not. However, this is my finished look with the Flutterby palette on our palette bingo. With the colours that I got. What do you think? So, if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. You are still getting lopped off left, right and centre. It's a vicious world out there. Once you've checked that, please don't forget to hit the like button. It really does help with the algorithm. And maybe consider leaving me a comment, perhaps even sharing the video, so that you can spread the love of the 4F family. Once you've done all of that, I'm going to need you to go to Marlin's channel and check out her film. Find out exactly which colours she ended up getting on her palette bingo and what her look has turned out like. Did she get any of the same shades as me? Did she get... The Angel BB shade that I had so much trouble with. Did she not have a problem with it because her eyelids are younger than mine? I don't know either. Because while you've been watching me, I've been watching her. And obviously I'm filming this the day before, so... Don't forget, once you've watched her film, to do all those good youtuber things. Give her a like, give her a comment, and if you're not already subscribed to her channel, what on earth are you missing? Go on, get in there. Hit the subscribe button. Tell her 4F sent you. If you are here from Marlin's channel, however, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it here. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there must be something you enjoyed. And uh, if you would like to continue enjoying yourself with these films, with this mad bird chattering away at you, it's very simple to do. You just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. Ring my bell, ring my bell. And choose all notifications and then say, yes, I want notifications. Yes, I want all notifications. Yes, I really want all notifications. And then you might get one in full every time I put a film up. Speaking of which, I have an awful lot of other films you can check out. So, as I have said for some time now, and I'm hearing it echoed 
in other less imaginative channels. Pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge. You can just spend a whole afternoon listening to this mad woman put colourful pigments on her face. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.